Hi guys, so in this video, what we're going to look at is set theory and the axioms of probability. Uh, so just to recap, in the last section, we looked at the probability event being the number of favourable outcomes over the total number of outcomes to calculate probability. And you can see here, it's only valid if the outcomes in the sample space are equally likely. Now this obviously isn't always going to be the case in real life. So to develop a more general mathematical theory of probability, we're going to use concepts and results from set theory. So we're just going to run through a few of the set notation again, just so you're happy with what's going on. So you can see here for sample space, normally we would call that U for the universal set. It's called S for the sample space. And what we now have is our sets here are events. OK, so normally we talk about two or three events. So we would label them A, B, C like we did before. What we have here is the null set. We know the null set contains nothing. OK, remember, we can say that that is given by the zero with the line through it. Or we can say as well, if you remember, we, all we do is we draw a set like that with nothing in it. If you see the word and in a probability question, that means that it's the intersection of the two sets, i.e. this bit here. So there's the intersection there, OK, A intersection B. That means that the two events have both happened. If you see the word or in probability, that means that what we have here is we have event A or B or both have happened. So that means what we have there is the union A, union B. If you see disjoint or mutually exclusive, then what that means is that there is no intersection. So if A and B are mutually exclusive, that means that there is no overlap. Uh, an example of that would be tossing a coin. You either get a head, which we'll call event A, or you get a tail, which is event B. You cannot get heads and tails at the same time. Therefore, there is no overlap or no intersection in this. So let's talk about the axioms of probability. Right, the axi An axiom in maths is just a rule that we just know to be true. We don't have to prove it. It's just so inherently obvious that it's true. We take it to be true. So the first axiom here is that the prob probability of an event will lie between 0 and 1. We already know that the probability of an event has to be between 0 and 1. The second axiom is the probability of the sample space must equal 1. The second bit of the axiom is that the probability of the null is equal to 0. We already know that. And it also says if... A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Let's have a look at that last one, because if I just very, very quickly draw a set here, we have A and we have B here. Now, normally what we'd have is the probability of A union B is by definition is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. And that there is in your tables book, guys. If you're not sure why that's the case, if you have a look at A union B, remember the A union B is all of this here. Then if I do the probability of A, and I'm just going to do this in blue, that's the probability of A. If we do the probability of B, I'll do that in red. You can see here that what we have done is we have counted this intersection twice where we've got the red and the blue. So the probability of A union B is the probability of A, which is the blue bit, plus the probability of B, which is the red bit. But we now have to take away the intersection because we've double counted it. So that would normally happen. Now, if you have a look at what happens when it's mutually exclusive, well, mutually exclusive means that there is no intersection. So if we just draw again our set notation, you have A and B. And using the same sort of idea, we have probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. Well, you can see here, there is no intersection. So this just collapses that if they are mutually exclusive events, then we end up with the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B because there is no intersection. So what happens is, this becomes equal to zero, which just leaves probability of A plus probability of B. So it ends up being PA union B is equal to the probability of A 
plus the probability of B. Now remember that only works if A and B are mutually exclusive events. Okay, let's get on to some examples then. So what we have here, there's an example of A, B and C, three events, probability of A is two thirds, B is a fifth, and the probability of C occurring is three sevenths. And if A and B are mutually exclusive, calculate the probability of A union B or A or B. So what we have here is we know that they are mutually exclusive, so we can use straight away that the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. And all we have to do then is calculate those probabilities and add them together. So probability of A is equal to two thirds plus the probability of B, which is equal to one fifth. And if we add them together, use your calculator, guys, is equal to 13 over 15. And we are done. Now, the second part asks us, it says, by calculating probability of A plus probability of C, explain why A and C are not mutually exclusive. Okay, so the probability of A plus the probability of C, that's what we've been asked to do, guys, so let's just do that. If we do that, we get the probability of A is equal to two-thirds, plus the probability of C is equal to three-sevenths. Which, if you bung it into your calculator, will give you a answer of 23 over 21. Now, a bit of an issue here, because we know by the first action that the probability must be less than or equal to 1. And you can see here, this does not meet that criteria, so therefore, not mutually exclusive. Okay, so in this example, we've got a single card is drawn at random from a pack of cards. And the first thing we're asked is, are the events of getting a four and getting a king mutually exclusive? Well, yeah, they are, because we cannot get a card that has simultaneously a king and a four on it. It's either a four or a king. So that means that this event or these events are mutually exclusive. Second thing it says is to calculate the probability of getting a four or a king. Now it's always a good now it's always good practice to define your events, so let's define them. So we'll say let A be the event we get a four and let B be the event just use these dashes we get a king. Okay. So the first thing we need to work out is the probability of A happening. And remember, to work out the probability, we need all of the favourable outcomes over the total possible outcomes. So the favourable outcomes of a four are the four of diamonds, the four of hearts, the four of clubs, and the four of spades. So there's four possible outcomes that we want over the total number of outcomes, which is 52 cards in a pack. Uh, likewise, if we have a look at event B, which is the event we get king. There's four kings again, clubs, hearts, diamonds, and spades. So that's equal to four over 52 again. Now I've been asked to calculate the probability of getting a four or a king. And remember or means it's going to be a union B, because that's what the or meant in the previous slides there. And we know that if it's mutually exclusive, we have the probability of A plus the probability of B. Again, that was one in the, on one of the previous slides. So all we do now is we add them up. So we've got 4 over 52 plus 4 over 52, which is equal to 8 over 52, which simplifies to 2 over 13. Remember to always simplify your fractions as much as you can. And that's it. Have a go at the exercise.